Eye on St. Lucie. Eye on St. Lucie is a show that talks about district policies, perspectives, and instructional practices. And today we have uh, a focus on Juneteenth. We have two guests joining us, Miss Marjorie Harrell and Miss Kate Ems. I'd like to welcome both of you ladies to today's show. Thank you for having Thank us. You. This is going to be quite exciting because we have an event in our community coming up associated with Juneteenth. And um, Juneteenth is an event in history that celebrates African American um, history, achievement, freedom, and it also promotes development and respect of other cultures as well. And I'm sure that many of our viewing audience members have heard of Juneteenth, but some may not have a deep understanding of really what it means to our history in the United States and to us as Americans looking at all of the different cultures that we appreciate and respect and work with and together. So we've got um, an opportunity today to really shed some light onto that. And Ms. Harrell, I can't think of anyone other than you who um, can really bring that to light. So can you give us a little bit of background on what Juneteenth is? Thank you, Carrie. Uh, believe it or not, at 60 years old, I had heard of it, but mm -hmm. had no idea what it was. Mm -hmm. um, one day I came home and somebody from the West Palm Beach school system had left a stack of these magazines at my door. And I just see the soldier and I say, why would they leave that on the door? I'm not interested in those soldiers. But I carried it in and I read it and I cried. And then I read some more and then I started researching. Because what Juneteenth is, June 19th, the ending of slavery in America, all slaves, because out in California area, there were slaves who were Chinese. And they were indentured servants. So after Abraham Lincoln fought the Civil War, after America fought the Civil War, um, and it goes back before the end, uh, after the people who had come from Britain fought for freedom from the British, the first man to get killed was an African-American slave named Christmas Addy. When the war was over, and they didn't mind being killed because they were fighting for freedom. And having been slaves and enslaved and brought from Africa on ships in bondage, they were willing to die for the rest of their people to be free. They fought, and when the war was over, they were told, oh, no, not you. You are not fully human, so you cannot be free. So they remained slaves until the Civil War was fought, and that was basically fought because the South was getting rich on cotton and the North was not. But, um, to, uh, and I can be long, but I'm going to make this short. Um, Abraham Lincoln wrote the Emancipation in 1862. He did not sign it. He put it in the death drawer. A year later, they heard he was going to sign it, so the slaves waited in an old church. All day they had slaves looking in the window of the building in Boston to see if he would sign it. At about 6 o'clock that afternoon, he signed the Emancipation Proclamation, freeing the slaves in the states that were fighting, really. Um, but those slaves went back to the church and said, he signed it, we free. They celebrated, they danced, they sang, they cooked, they ate. But they went north because they knew if they went south and nobody knew, they would be in bondage again. And um, it was two and a half years later, the troops from the north came down. And to see how the slaves, the freed men were doing. And they were still enslaved. So they would call, have the master call the men from the farm and tell them, you're free. You've been free for two years, a year and a half, whatever it was. They got to Florida May 20th. 1865. Freed the slaves in North Florida because there were none in South. Then he got to Texas on June 19th, 15th through the 19th. And that was so, also the year 1865. 1865. Correct? Okay. So two and a half years after freedom in America from slavery, we were still enslaved, blacks were, and only freed in 1865. So they celebrated, they danced in Texas, and, uh, and Galveston, Texas was the last state to find out. And they went no, uh, west, but they started called, celebrating every year and calling it Juneteenth because June 19th. Okay. So that's how we come with Juneteenth. And it is a national holiday. It didn't happen all over at night, but it has become since I think about 1993, 97. It has become a national 
observed holiday, legal holiday. They call legislature call it America's second independence holiday. The 4th of July is America's Independence Day. And that's our Independence Day because we are Americans. But as far as being free from slavery, we only got that freedom in 1865. It's a big celebration all around the country and in other countries. I met people in bookstores and they were amazed at how many black books are written by black authors. And they were all excited. I'm saying, hey, well, come to our festival we have in June and we give away books by black authors for children mm -hmm. and adults. And they would say, when is that? And I'd say, Juneteenth. And they say, June 19th. Oh, oh no, I got to be back in England. Mm -hmm. I got to be back in Italy. That's one of our biggest holidays. So it's celebrated all around the world. And even the um, soldiers have taken it to Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. So it's an international celebration of freedom. And you've mentioned the fact that we do celebrate this. It has become more of more, more awareness mm -hmm. has come about in regard to Juneteenth over the last several years. This was something that was initiated back in 1865, as you yes. mentioned. And the significance of this year is that we are actually celebrating the 150th anniversary of Juneteenth, correct? Right, 150 yes. years and, of freedom in America. Yes, ma'am. And then I know that um, that uh, zeal for creating more awareness, making sure that we get the message out in the community is also something that we look for within our school system. Oh, yes. And, you know, teaching history is part of what we do, aligning it to the standards. And Ms. Ems, you are just so good about making sure that whenever there is something of significance in our history, that you do bring it to light and you share that information with our instructional staff so in turn we can share it with our, our students. Mm -hmm. So how are we um, sharing this piece of our history with our students? Well, we always look at our standards that the Department of Education sets for us and we look every year to make sure that we are keeping up with the most up-to-date standards and we create our scope and sequences based on that. In our eighth grade curriculum, we focus on exploration of the Americas through the Civil War and Reconstruction, which is where Juneteenth beautifully fits um, with our curriculum. They study what life was like for slaves coming to the Americas, what it was like during the Civil War Reconstruction, and how they were freed and how they were freed afterwards. So sending out lesson plans to our teachers was something that we could do and we created a lesson plan that was sent out to all of the schools and it focuses on the history of Juneteenth and has the students really critically think about how it is like our second Independence Day comparing it to the 4th of July to other holidays that we have using text and song to make those connections mm -hmm. and that is something that we've sent out to all of our mm -hmm. schools. And I wanted to um, say thank you publicly because as you entered the building today, you had a stack of um, mm -hmm. newspapers that you shared with Mrs. M's so that we in turn can use that as a resource yes, for yes. instruction. And, and we do appreciate that mm -hmm. very much. Um, and I appreciate you, mm -hmm. um, Dr. Perry, uh, Dr. Rendell, mm -hmm. and this young lady I just met her, but I knew about her. Mm -hmm. Mr. Perry talked about mm -hmm. you highly. He praised you. Mm -hmm. Because even though the, your curriculum is really full, mm -hmm. you took the time to make sure mm -hmm. that you educated the kids so everybody will understand mm -hmm. why independence is important mm -hmm. and that um, you know everybody didn't get independence at the same time and why this is important mm -hmm. too, that we all understand who we are. Mm -hmm. Because when you have more pride in who you are, when you know your history, your legacy, then you tend to act different and feel better. And I am so looking forward to the next school turn coming in August, September, because I know you're going to be implementing African American history throughout the school system. One of the things that um, I think is going to be very important and, and supportive of our celebration coming up, you know, Juneteenth falls after the fact that our children are dismissed from school, but we've taken measures to make sure that they had an awareness, they have a background. Mm -hmm. So for students, parents, community members who are participating and are in town when this is going on, they, they now have a better understanding of why we are right. doing it. Um, you've been so involved in the preparation of the celebration and drawing people together. 
Can you give us a little bit of the specifics in regard to the celebration that we'll have here within our area? I can. And um, we have celebrated on a small scale with children, mm -hmm. the young children from summer camps in uh, the Lincoln Park Community Center for 10 years. This year, because it was the 150th anniversary, we wanted to make it bigger and more community involvement. So we have um, gotten a lot of sponsors and supporters on board and we're spreading it out throughout the summer. Not only are we going to have activities that start on, um, well, last Saturday there was a uh, family fun day in the park. We connected that with the Bounce House Company that presented that. Um, on this Saturday, at 4 o'clock, we're asking people to come out to the Marina Square, wear white or white shirt if you don't have all white, and participate with us in what's going to be the opening ceremony, a libation, where you pay honor to our ancestors who did not make it over on the voyage uh, on the slave ship, who either jumped overboard or died during the passage. And then you can also honor our ancestors who have passed on. And then on, um, that's about an hour on Saturday afternoon from can you tell four. Us what, that's what I was going to ask. From what four o'clock to six thirty, and it follows immediately after the city of Fort Pierce is doing the ribbon cutting for the project that they did in Marina Square, mm -hmm. where they did the, uh, the barrier islands out in the water. They are going to be there from 9 o'clock. So it's going to be a full day in the Fort Pierce. And a beautiful and, place to oh, be. Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And the reason we go to the water and perform that ceremony, because the water is the substance of life, you know. And uh, without water, we do not exist. And um, on Monday, at 10 o'clock till 1 o'clock, the children from daycare centers and summer programs will come. They will be served lunch. They will be taught about Juneteenth. They will be taught drumming, and we'll do arts and crafts, and we'll give away books courtesy of Children's Service Council. Every year they give us books, uh, funds to get books to give to the kids. That's Monday, June 15th? Monday, June 15th. Okay. From 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock, uh, people who are passing by, usually stop and say, what are you doing, you know, and can I take part? And sure you can. We want uh, the community to come. And, you know, if you're listening on television, please feel free to come and join us on Saturday afternoon, on Monday, on um, two, and we, they do the libation service ceremony too. And it's so sweet when the kids do it because sometimes they'll say, uh, I, we, we say, uh, Habari Ghani, what's the news? And then they'll call out the name of an ancestor who has passed on. And sometimes they might say, my mama bestest friend, uh, I don't know her name, but I know she died and my mama cried. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's a time for them to remember. And then they go home and they teach their parents about it. And um, on Wednesday, Tuesday we don't do anything. On Wednesday, we have noonday prayer. Okay, and that's at June an old 17th. church, yes, June seventeenth, okay. at an old church on Avenue D and Eighteenth Street, um, triumph the church of God. And the reason we chose the old church and we keep it there is it's a replica of what the church was like when they waited for him to sign the Emancipation Proclamation. We do, there are so many different prayers for so many things. I didn't know you can say a prayer just to ask God for something that you want, not what you need, but just want something and ask him for it. And they say he answers those prayers too. Um, we usually have a bag lunch because people come from on lunchtime for noonday prayer. So we make sure that they have a beverage and a sandwich or sometimes we use chicken. We get uh, the restaurant on Avenue D to provide a, a lunch for them. And we give them lunch so you can feel free if you can only do it during your lunchtime then know that we're going to have you some food to go back to work with. Uh, on Thursday, we have what's our, our, one of our biggest events called Uncrowned Kings and Queens, where we honor the common man who is always in the community doing something that uh, you don't usually know what they do. Uh, and a good example is I brought this to um, this lady, Clara Brady, worked in the Lincoln Park uh, school system. And um, she heard I was doing this. And she had her, her daughter call me and tell me to come by her house. And when I got there, I said, Clara, I know you. We work together. She said, I know Marjorie. But I did not know her. And all these years, I did not know who she was. 
she was a shop, she was a crew steward when Cesar Chavez was fighting Coca-Cola Production Company for better wages for the farm workers, mm -hmm. the grove workers. They were fighting for more money. She has gone to jail, been arrested, and everything else for this cause. And she has all this history that I would not have known about if I was not doing this project. And we, the public, the community, would not know about that we're going to learn about now. And I'm going to bring her to meet you so she can go into the schools, perhaps during Black History Month, at the end, sometime when you want to do, and teach the kids about the struggle. Because it's important that we know who our, our elders are, what contribution they made. And when you sit, begin to understand the struggle and how people bore that struggle, and they still are doing fine and still alive. You know, it's like Maya Angelou. I am so sad that they did not bring her to the Sunrise Theater, but we never had enough money to bring her. And I kept telling John Wilkes, if you don't bring her, she's going to die, and we won't get to see her. And sure enough, she's gone. But these are people that are local, our unsung heroes, the ones who never yet noticed, never yet expect to get an award. And it is such a moving event that I called, and we have the Uncrying King and Queen, and then we have a tribal leader. It's an organization that does things in the community without being asked. It might be part of your job, but you go the extra mile and make sure it happened. And I called, and I said, you know, I just read her uh, information, and I need to make her a tribal leader. And the committee said, well, if you make her a tribal leader, we tribal leaders are organizations. She's not an organization. So this time we're going to do something a little different. We usually ask one hour for uncrowned kings and queens. We're going to give them a minute or two to talk about themselves. And they're going to give me a minute to talk about them. And that's going to be a challenge. And that's something that as I was doing my research for Juneteenth, I was looking at what takes place across the nation. Mm -hmm. And um, you've hit upon many of the things. I, I saw that you know there are rodeos, there are festivals, there are events, celebrations. The piece about guest speakers mm -hmm. in order for communities to honor and recognize who within their own community can be that model, can be that mentor. And those are um, actually some of the things that you are bringing to light that we are doing here in recognition for Juneteenth. We are following a very positive model nationwide of um, ways in order for our young people to appreciate their history, to understand their history. When I say young people, but like you said earlier, when our children learn about something, it's always wonderful for them to take it home and teach their siblings, their parents, right. who may not have that mm -hmm. background knowledge mm -hmm. as well. And I tell anybody, Google it. Google Juneteenth and just be amazed and be, I, I mean, it's just so exciting when you see what I'll do. Usually when you build a festival and you after maybe five or six, ten years, you might have in your community 50,000 to 100,000 people coming in for your celebration because you get to add things to it. Each year you add more to it, an element that attracts people to it. And so that, this is just our beginning. But I guarantee you in about 10 years from now, I, and I won't even take that long, five years, that we will have at least 30, 40 people, 1,000 people coming into Fort Pierce just for Juneteenth. And we're going to spread it all across the county. We're going to have activities in Port St. Lucie, mm -hmm. in the county, in um, White City, in Fort Pierce, Lakewood Park, everywhere. Because when we all understand each other's culture, then we all love each other more and love each other better. Well, Mrs. Sims, I think you and I just heard her set a goal for herself. <laughs> Not 10 years, but five years. We're going to see that spread across our county um, events throughout the week. Now, you've taken us up, uh, I believe, up through Thursday. Mm -hmm. Thursday, and then we're going to do, we have events going on all summer, really, because it's the 105th, 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to just stop at June 19th. We're going to take it all through the summer with the activities going on. We are partnering with uh, a lot of sponsors, and I talked with the new chief of police, uh, Ms. Bernie, and she's all excited about doing things, and we're going to partner with them on some activities and some events. We're going to do a outdoor festival in the Lincoln Park community because we think that to every community should have cultural events, viable cultural events going on in the community. So we're going to do that within the Lincoln Park community. A lot of these activities during the week are different places around town. 
and um, we want to be inclusive. So we're going to do that. We have coming up um, soon a Miss, uh, a Miss and Miss, Little Miss and Miss uh, Juneteenth pageant where these girls, the winners, will reign the rest of the year. They will be featured in other events and parades, the Martin Luther King and whatever else there is. We'll make sure that they are in there. And then next year, they will give up their crown to the new winners. This is something new that we are doing. And I wore my T-shirt that say Team Marjorie, and everybody was wondering why she ain't dressed up. Because I thought it was important for everybody to know, this is not about Marjorie. I have a team of people that come when I call them, and sometimes they say, no, I'm tired, I'm busy, but they get it done, and that's what's important. So you are my honorary team members now. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, as honorary team members, let us share with you um, a proclamation that was read by Dr. Kevin Perry this okay. week at our school board meeting. And um, Kate, if you could shed some light on really the proclamation that was read and the significance of that, mm -hmm. that would be fantastic. Uh, like Carrie, you said on June 9th at our board meeting, mm -hmm. Dr. Kevin Perry and, Doc and Mr. Terrence Barron are from Forest Grove Middle School and Superintendent Yost came together to uh, share with the board and the community a resolution. Um, they wanted to call attention to Juneteenth, its history, and to call attention in our community from May 20th to July, July 4th as Juneteenth season of freedom. And they ended the resolution saying, for all Americans as a time to learn more about our common past and to better understand the experiences that helped shape our nation and really formally recognizing the holiday, its impact on our community and our history. Okay. Very Thank good. you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really appreciate that. And I'll have you know that the county, the city of Fort Pierce, um, they also do a proclamation. And believe it or not, the state of Florida did a resolution. Uh, I'm going to quickly, I won't read it to you, but um, St. Louis County. I picked it up coming out. It's about mm, eight years old that they did an apology mm -hmm. to African Americans for the treatment that was given in the state of Florida, the um, bondage and the servitude without uh, salary. And they apologized for that. And I thought that was a very important thing to happen because it makes you feel like, okay, this happened, I can't do anything about it, but at least it is being acknowledged as something that was done wrong, and it makes you feel better. Because believe it or not, we have the Holocaust, but then America, America had its own Holocaust, and that was slavery. Because some of the same treatments that was done to the Jewish and during the Holocaust was done to slaves in America. So it's important that we... And I've heard you mention... Um few people individually who you know stood out in history as trying to make a difference and mm -hmm. we do have a history that is very very rich oh yeah and people taking a stand um, moving forward to do what's right for the betterment of all mm -hmm. we learn um, about our future by learning about our past mm -hmm. and it certainly helps for all of us to understand what occurred and what the impact was for our future decision making and I think that is so important for our students and for our, our community as a whole to understand that you know, history is rich yes. and we have made tremendous strides and we continue to make strides mm -hmm. um, learning together, working together, playing together and, right. and being a unified community. So I look forward to the celebrations that we are going to um, be able to take part in throughout the next Good. few months mm -hmm. um, and really uh, we continue to learn about our history within our content areas throughout the entire year. Um, Thank we, you. We, we do appreciate that and understand the significance of it. Um, we are just about uh, ready to close out the show, but I do have some time. If you, either one of you have a closing remark that you would like to share? I'd just like for everybody to know, if you go on um, online and look up uh, Juneteenth, which is the key word, and a lot of them will pop up. Uh, in Fort Pierce it says Juneteenth, Festival, Fort Pierce, and you'll see the rest of it, 2012. Uh, Fort P and and it also, we're also including a black art element to it. 
because a lot of people said to me, we used to have a black arts festival. We don't have that no more. These are seniors. And can we have that again? So we're adding the art element to it, and next year we're going to make it even bigger and better as it grows. We will continue to call it the Juneteenth Season of Freedom Black Arts Festival. And um, so we're looking forward to that. And just Google Juneteenth itself and learn what it's all about. And as you learn what it's all about, you'll understand more. And, you know, we are on the radio. We're going to red, different radio stations. I'll be sure to email you as we add more events on and let you know what's going on, both of you. I appreciate the school system for, um, I think we're going, we're growing. We're doing some new and innovative things, and we're going to go forward beautifully. I could not agree more. Thank you so much. Ms. Ems, anything? Just to add on to what you were saying, Carrie, it's so important that we study our history and our culture so that we know what has happened in the past and we can make wise decisions mm -hmm. for the future. So I'm very thankful for the community mm -hmm. expressing you know, what we've gone through and continuing to educate our children. And thank you for community members who stand up and take responsibility. Yes. You did an you. awesome job. Thank you. In St. Lucie uh, Public Schools, we do have a commitment to stay focused on student achievement and academic excellence, ensuring that high quality instruction is part of what our children receive every single day, making sure that we have safe and caring schools and that we are always looking to recruit and retain high quality staff for the sake of our children, for the sake of our community. To stay in tune to what is going on within your St. Lucie Public Schools, I invite you to please download the St. Lucie Public School app. You can always like us on Facebook and get a day-to-day -day occurrence of the events, the happenings, and some information on public schools, as well as follow us on Twitter. Many, many opportunities to stay in tune with what is going on in your St. Lucie Public Schools.